What is up you guys? So welcome back to the channel today. I'm gonna to be taking you guys through a workout and some other stuff, but primarily the focus of this video is going to be on training with intensity, like grit, really hard training. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like to go to failure. So I think there's a lot of confusion when it comes to how hard you should be training, what type of weight you should be using, how many sets, how many reps per set, per exercise, whatever it is. And I'm gonna be 100% real with you guys. A lot of that is just noise. Like that's all it is, it's noise. What matters is how close you take a set to failure. So what I mean by that is how far away or how close were you to not being able to physically execute one more perfect rep during your set. Like four sets of 12 as your stereotype. What does that really mean? Like you can do 12 reps with a super lightweight and stimulate very little muscle growth. Like if you're just using a super lightweight that isn't challenging for you, that's not gonna build you muscle. So purpose of today's video, I'm gonna explain to you guys, help you identify what is true failure. How do I train hard? How do I train with intensity? It's all gonna make sense. Let's head in there and get started. I'll keep fighting. I'll break myself. Even if there's nothing left of me, I will win the way I want to. I'll destroy myself before I accept defeat at your hands! You got that! I don't want there to be any doubt that I'm the best student at the festival! Okay, so we're all warm. I'm starting on seated cable rows. I'm gonna be doing three sets to failure. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what failure is gonna look like. I'm setting the pin to 185 pounds. For me, that amount of weight, when I get to like rep 10 or 11 or 12, I start to fail. My form starts to break down. And that's the sweet spot because I'm shooting for eight to 12 reps per set. So putting it at a weight where the 12th rep is almost impossible to get means I'm gonna be failing before I can get to that 12th rep. So that's how I know I'm achieving failure. I'm picking a heavy enough weight. All right, so we got two solid sets of the seated cable rows in the book. Now for my last set, the third set, I'm gonna do something called a drop set. Now most of you guys probably already know what that is, but for those of you who don't, a drop set is basically where you take a set to failure at one weight, and then without any rest, you change the weight to a lighter weight and continue to do more reps. And it's basically a way to overload the muscle and reach failure in a new way. So I'm gonna do 12 reps at 185, and then when I fail, I'm gonna put the pin up to 155 and do as many reps as I can at that weight. Just like that, I'm done with the cable rows. I'm not messing around with five, six sets. Literally just three really good sets taking a failure is all you need. All right guys, so moving on to the next exercise, I'm doing some side lateral raises. Now because these are a smaller muscle group, you guys can actually reduce the rest time in between sets. So for compound exercises, I would do three to four minutes rest in between each set. And then for an isolation movement like the side delt, I would do something like one to two minutes rest. Now another nice little way I like to achieve failure on movements like side raises is something called partials. 
So once you guys get to that point in your set where you literally just can't even do one more complete rep, you can do something called a partial where you only do about 50%, even 30% of the range of motion and you just do more of those and you just keep doing less and less as you get tired and more tired. And that's another really good way to stimulate muscle growth by really pushing past that failure point. So for this next set, I'm gonna grab some slightly heavier dumbbells and I'm only gonna be able to do like eight or 10 clean reps and then my form is gonna start to fail. But that's okay because I'm gonna do some partials, which is still a way to achieve failure. So let's try it out. There you go. As you can see, first 10 or 12 reps looked clean. Towards the end of the set, form started to deteriorate, but that's okay because we're doing the partials and great way to fatigue the shoulders. So next up, I'm doing a set of incline dumbbell bench press. I'm gonna do about two to three sets to failure for this one. The primary goal that I have in mind when training is looking aesthetic. So I'm not just trying to get as big as possible, but I wanna look proportional and I wanna have that aesthetic physique and stuff like the upper chest with a movement like this is really important for looking that way. Now, something else that comes to my mind when talking about training with intensity is there is research that's shown that the closer you come to failure during your set, the more muscle growth is actually stimulated. And that does mean that you guys are gonna have to go through some pain and feel that really uncomfortable feeling during your sets if you really wanna make some serious gains in the gym. If you fit that classification of someone who just doesn't like pushing themselves, you do like, you kind of go through the motions but you never really train that hard, you can expect less gains than someone who does train hard. Another thing to keep in mind, training to failure is going to tax your body heavily. Like it's gonna require lots of energy and it's gonna really fatigue you. And so if you guys aren't prioritizing your recovery after your workout sessions, you're gonna get that gradual buildup of fatigue and it will become harder to progress if you're not actually managing your recovery, making sure you're recovering outside of the gym, getting your sleep, getting your calories. So like I always say, just be careful. Four to five days a week, max, train to failure, but make sure you're hitting your macros, you're hitting your calorie goals, getting eight to nine hours of sleep every night and you guys are gonna make some great progress. Final exercise, I'm just gonna move on to some arms, some of those smaller muscle groups, and basically just blast everything, try to get a nice pump, and finish off the workout.
All right guys, so pretty much done with the workout. As you guys can see, I mean, I was only really training for about 55 minutes. It really doesn't take long to get, to squeeze all that juice out of the workouts you guys are having. If you're in the gym for more than 90 minutes, two hours, you probably aren't training hard enough. It's a sad reality, but you really don't need to be in there that long. The biggest thing I think about training with intensity is the dopamine and kind of that feeling of you did good in the gym, like that feeling like you left it all out on the table. You will not get that with normal gym training. I know for a fact that when I have kind of like a seven out of 10 workout, I know I didn't really push myself that hard. I don't feel satisfied. Like I don't have that satisfactory feeling of completion and success. But when I've gone balls to the wall, like 10 out of 10, I could not have gone harder in that gym. It's just a feeling that you like simply cannot beat. So training to failure is important. Now, when you guys are really, and I mean really pushing yourself, like let's say you have a set of squats and it's the heaviest weight you've ever done if you are really like even a little bit worried before you get into that set like your heart beats fluttering a little bit you're like i don't know if i can get this am i going to injure myself am i going to throw up like all these negative thoughts going through your head but then you can still manage to do it and get through that set bro everything else you do in that day in that week seems doable no matter how hard it is like the gym gives you such a good sense of discipline and just teaches you so many life lessons like if you can train with the utmost intensity and passion that you ever had before everything else in your life just feels that much easier like this set of squats there's no way that the homework you have to do or the dishes you have to get done there's no way any of that is gonna be harder than that brutal set of squats you just did and now that you know that everything just becomes that much more doable anywho I'm gonna head home I will catch you guys in a little bit when I get back so we got that post-workout protein cooking up. If you're gonna train big, you gotta eat big too. So we're gonna do some super high calorie meals before we go to sleep tonight, I think, too. Some of this bad boy right here. Sometimes I'll even just have straight up protein without like rice or anything and just eat that. And it's like easier for me to get my calories in that way. If I like mix rice or the carbs in with the protein for some reason, it's just like harder for me to eat. All right, so next meal I got my post-workout smoothie, which is honestly so fire. I've been making it like basically every day. It's a ton of frozen mango, one really ripe, like almost brown banana, 30 to 50 grams of oatmeal, some orange juice, and then basically anything else you wanna throw in there, like peanut butter, honey, chia seeds, but the banana, the oats, the juice, and then the mango is the base. And holy is it fire. I've literally, the first time I ever had it, I'm like, yep, I'm making that for the next 30 days straight. I'll show you guys what it looks like blended up. So good, if you guys struggle to hit your micros, like fruit and stuff, Mm, that's one way to do it. All right, you guys, so that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys found this one helpful. If you enjoyed it, please do not forget to smash that thumbs up button and I will catch you guys in the next YouTube video. Peace out.